we do conduct trials even right. before this. So our main focus is to conduct trials, which requires our uh, regulatory body, that is CDSCO. Focus is to be able to help them so that they can reach to a stage where we can actually prove or disprove whatever they are claiming. Picture this, a vast network of research and healthcare professionals working together to solve the most pressing health challenges of our time. Leading minds joining hands to drive forward breakthroughs that revolutionize the field of medicine. This is what ICMR is spearheading. From groundbreaking clinical trials to innovative public health initiatives, ICMR's clinical trial network forms the backbone of medical progress. And because of these networks working tirelessly behind the scenes, we now find ourselves way better prepared to face health challenges and emergencies. Welcome to another episode of ICMR Radio, Unpacking Health Research in India. I'm Sanjana and today we're diving into the fascinating world of clinical networks. Joining us today is a special guest who knows this world inside out. Dr. Aparna Mukherjee, Scientist E and Head of Clinical Studies and Trials Unit, that's CSTU, ICMR Headquarters. So if you're a healthcare worker, a research enthusiast, or eager to learn about the inner workings of medical science, this episode is sure to inspire you. Dr. Mukherjee, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. So let's dive right into it. You're an integral part of the Indian Clinical Trial and Education Network, also known as INTENT at ICMR. So tell us about it and what was ICMR's goal in establishing it? Thank you for inviting me. It's always nice to speak about this network. We had this idea uh, during the COVID pandemic because we realized that a ready network of institutes who are trained and who are poised to take up clinical trials at any point of time is very useful. Even during the pandemic, we did conduct uh, multiple studies, clinical trials, but then we had to individually contact all the medical colleges, research institutes and get them into the loop. And they were very enthusiastic and they were they worked very hard and so from there generated this idea and as we have seen in most of the countries which have successful research output that a clinical trial network is a very helpful concept because it kind of gives you a pool of researchers who are trained and who know how to do clinical trials and they can then be deployed at any point of time when we have a good better idea or when even during emergencies or could say peacetime as well as war time. The whole idea was generated from there and then we started working on having this network so it the groundwork had been done during COVID when we were contacting with so many institutes and we had a loop of institutes. And uh, with that idea, we actually floated uh, expressions of interest with uh, so that they could apply if they wanted to be a part of this network and if they had some experience of doing clinical trials before. Right. So we invited uh, expressions of interest from a team of researchers who were interested. I think although uh, so challenging for the world, not just for India, the pandemic uh, really taught us and gave us these kind of learnings that have then brought on so many such collaborative networks and strengthened the health system actually in, in yeah. a big way. So which research institutes are, are currently part of this network? And uh, would you say that private research institutes are also involved? And what roles would the different institutes actually pick. Yes, as we wouldn't say that this was the best of times and worst of times. The pandemic did teach us a lot of things and in this network we have 47 institutes spread across the country. So we wanted to ensure that there is a geographical spread across the country so that we get representative population from each of the zones. Right. It is kind of a disease agnostic. Hmm. If you could say that this is not like uh, specifically for pediatric or, or neurological but rather it is for clinical trials so whenever an idea comes in we float an expression of interest so the ones who have the expertise they apply right. and then we can go ahead with the trials it's not necessary that all the 47 institutes will take part at a time right yeah but they are poised and they are trained 
to be able to do it. So I have been telling all of the experts that are on this podcast, I prod them a little more to explain some things because I'm also cognizant of the fact that our audience is here, probably joining from all over the world and are from different areas. So if you were to just explain to me what is a clinical trial and what is that particular idea look like mm-hmm. that would come in and then you have that expression of interest if you could give me an example of what that actually entails or like what are the kind of trials that you have worked on yeah i could uh, tell you that a clinical trial is basically a type of research study where we are doing some intervention mm. like it can be a drug it can be a device it can be any kind of social behavioral interventions as well yeah so and there are two groups two or more groups so that one group gets the intervention the other one is a control group so it, the control can be that they don't get any uh, like active intervention or it can be the standard of care which is continuing so they get just that so that we can compare them at the end and understand whether this whatever x intervention is there works or not so right. this is the very basic principle of a clinical right. trial and as for ideas like uh, i can give you again an example from covid-19 like mm-hmm. we did one on convalescent plasma as you are all aware that there was a lot of usage of convalescent plasma in covid patients we did a trial to see whether a uh, usage of convalescent plasma mm-hmm. could halt the progress of covid in okay. moderate hospitalized covid patients right So here we had one group which received the convalescent plasma the other group which did not were receiving the usual care and the end of the study we compared this is how it works all right very interesting so does then the network you know you said it it uh, doesn't really focus on a specific thematic area how do you then prioritize um these kind of trials because i'm guessing after covid then there are so many other trials that come across right yes so our uh, uh, like as uh, i see mar as a research organization we do conduct trials even right. before this right so our main focus is to conduct trials ones which are regulatory clinical trials in the sense that there is a some new innovation a new right. drug or a new device vaccines other therapeutics which requires our uh, regulatory body that is cdsco mm-hmm. their approval so there is very set fixed rules how to do this and yeah. these are usually difficult so many a times when we do have molecules or new innovations from the academia or smaller startups they don't uh, go forward there's a valley of death so they have a proof of concept they have yeah. early stage studies and then they die down yeah focus is to be able to help them so that they can reach to a stage where technology transfer can be done or we can actually prove or disprove whatever they are claiming yeah so that's a big chunk of our mandate yeah. yeah and secondly we focus on the national health priorities because we have these national health priorities that mm. india has as well Correct. as all the research organizations have right so we focus on trials which pertain to these health priorities they are like large trials difficult to do trials there are certain more of collaborations and multilateral interactions is required where this kind of network and icmas help will be very beneficial right right so are you at at liberty or privy to talk about any of the uh, interesting clinical trials that you currently working on well i wouldn't say a specific trials but mm-hmm. yes we are working on various areas like tuberculosis fire area right burns mm. or like acute uh, yes emergencies like burns and uh, also on some of the uh, ayush products we also we have been taking up to have a very rigorous uh, like uh, trial in order to right. see their effect and uh, the other focus is medical devices because we okay. know that's a huge area which is opening up there right. are many innovators in india who are coming up with brighter ideas and more affordable ideas they require clinical validate clinical investigations so that is also another part that do help them do conducts all right anything that that you wanted to focus on particularly you spoke about devices 
but when it comes to vaccines and drugs anything that the network is currently undertaking that is of of interest something that you think requires more focus or you'd like to highlight currently we are uh, focused on some of these infectious diseases like tuberculosis like yeah. filaria because yeah. filaria is a, a neg- is a tropical disease yes. which is a very niche area for india the others are not going to work on it correct so we are working on newer drugs drugs which will kill the adult worms mm. in that right and uh, as i said for we have a lot of collaborations with the other departments and other part other um, facets of the ministry like we have collaborations with ayush with csir so yeah. we are also helping them develop the protocol and conduct the studies all right and uh, if i were to ask you in closing before i let you go a single piece of advice that you would like to offer aspiring health researchers keen on conducting clinical research and of interest women who want to work in stem yeah we i have been asked this before also <laughs> women in stem but yes. uh, uh, currently environment is very conducive if you look at icmr itself we have so many heads of divisions directors of institutes who are actually women who have yeah. Uh, risen to that level with their hard work and their very inspiring yes it's always uh, about what you want in life and how you go about it yeah so it's not like uh, if you work you cannot have the other part or if you uh, maintain a family life you cannot have the work it's more of work life balance and more of how you dedicate yourself yeah yeah totally yeah, totally and uh, for apart from being a woman if you just take into account clinical research yes. yes clinical research the whole environment in india is still in a nascent stage but it is evolving very fast mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so we have so much of interest in clinical trials in new devices in new research it is an area which is very interesting will require young uh, enthusiastic people yeah but it is an evolving it's not like fixed set like if you're an engineer you know yeah. what you do you yeah get so your degree so what is the adaptability yes mm. and uh, you need to have that uh, you could say creativity adaptability to be able to get your work done you know i yesterday i had the other privilege of also uh, speaking with the director dr anvikar and he pointed out something that i just thought uh, really resonated with me and i'm sure a lot of people as we are all in our shark tank moment is the fact that i think we place very little focus on creative scientific medical folks having business mindset yeah do you think that that's also required in clinical research that you need to have an entrepreneurial mindset as well to some extent yes we need to be able to see it through the end and so that that whatever technology or drug that we are developing yeah. i mean a proof of concept as a scientific concept even if we get it that's a very good thing yeah we yeah. get a publication and we get patents etc correct but it should be able to reach the targeted population right. and for that bit of this uh, entrepreneurship or creativity is required because it's not that smooth sailing thing yeah. which yeah. we are trying to develop uh, as in icmr uh, ecosystem so that there will be an end to end solution for this so yeah. that from the proof of concept till it reaches the market yeah yes that kind of a push and uh, is required from the researchers as well absolutely and thank you for that very very good advice and that really brings us to the end of this fascinating episode and thank you so much for that Uh, we hope you enjoyed our deep dive into the world of clinical trial networks their pivotal role in advancing healthcare a big thank you to you dr mukherjee for sharing your insights with us and as for our viewers make sure to like subscribe stay tuned for more episodes of icmr radio unpacking health research and don't forget to follow icmr on social media for the latest updates insights into cutting edge health research and clinical advancements once again this is sanjana chauhan signing off thank you so much for joining us stay tuned